on this one and just lock both legs for me. Okay. From when his both legs are locked, now his third point is going to be directly right there. It's going to be right there. So the, that's where the person falls. Watch where his butt falls, okay, is to the third point. That's the center of balance. I'm not saying that Bill has a big butt, but still, that's where most of his balance is. <laughs> you should see his face now. Okay, so the problem is we have complexities of our knees. Okay, if he puts his weight forward, now it's no longer going to be there, but it's going to be more towards this direction. Okay? If he puts his weight back, now his third point ends up being back this way. So let's just do Sumio Toshi again to show you if he balances forward, okay, it's not going to be back here, but it's going to be here. If he puts his weight back there, it's not going to be here, not there, it's way back here. Okay. So the complexities of the knees change where the third point is. Katata tori. Okay. Now, if Bill's weight is really, is going to lower himself with both knees, there, where is his third point now, would you say? Let's see, out, further out to the side? No, it's actually because he's lowered it, his shadow oh. is much closer. Yes, so try to drop him where you think it would go. That's it. Now, if he stands up tall, okay, then his center of balance is way up here. If you try to take him right down there, see what happens. Yeah, you took him way over here. Try taking him close to you. If you hold him up high, try to take it right, right down there. there. Right? No. It's not going to work. Right, so it's going to be out there. Good. So, where the person's key is, is going to vary with his balance and his posture. If Bill happens to be one who takes much more of a uh, Tomiki style stance, okay, that's going to affect things too. Where would you say his third point is now? Maybe behind, most of the back. Right. Okay, take him down, please. Good. Thank you. So, everything we do here, the way the foot is, the way the knees are, the way the body turns or is in hammi, is going to change the way that the person's third point lies on the floor. Now, it's not just on the floor. It's all around the body. So, third point here, okay? Not here. He's not gonna move too much. He's not gonna move this way much. But he's gonna move there, okay? So, Larry, if we can come here, we're going to use another strategy. If we just try to do, uh, let's say, a technique by coming in here and that, and if you can lower your key as I come in there, it's going to be hard for me to do anything because I haven't fixed your center. You can move your key, or if I come up high, you can lower it, or if I lower, if I come in low, you can raise it up. So I have to fix the center of where it is. And I can do that by leading him. So if I cut the tori, so if I come in here, he doesn't have an opportunity to change where his key goes. It will stay fixed at one point. It will be fixed at a level where he's comfortable moving. Let's see where he moves, this side. Okay, so as I come in, he was right here. Okay, so I'm working with, by, uh, what I'm doing is I'm fixing where his center is by leading him continuously. If I stop, then I have a problem. 
because he can change where his center is. Watch what happens. Larry's really good at this. So. Oops. <laughs> right. Soon as I stop, I've lost him. So I have to continue moving him so that I maintain his center at one point. Thank you, Larry. Now, if we do that, Bill, can I get you in here? We're gonna do, we're gonna do something a little different. Now, he, see if you can uh, change where your center is as I try to drop you to your front. Okay, good. So you've shifted your weight and your center to the back so I can no longer throw here. Well, I can take care of that by leading you to a point where you cannot change your center. Let's do another one. We'll do a dynamic one. If I stop halfway through there, you can change your key. And so there's no way for me to drop you anymore because you've changed where your center is. And you, now I no longer have your third point. But if I can keep you moving, then I am able to control where your third point is at all times. Atemi, the strategy of Atemi we can use to fix the key in, uh, for instance, if you're coming to grab me, there, fix the key in the head, okay? And so that provides two options. We've got one, it moves everything to their head and it also you can use it to blind them. <laughs> and when they open their eyes, they're right above you. Okay. Uh, we can also fix a tummy in different parts of the body. So, right, so now you're here. That means you're falling forward this way. Right, so. Okay. We can use a tummy down here. We can use a tummy here. Right, so. Here. Yeah. So we can use a tummy in different parts of the body to change where people hold their key. But this has a this has can create a problem. Here I'll show you something. From here, if I do my atemi here and I try to do a sankyo up here, notice I don't have a good sankyo, do I? You should be able to get out of this. See? Yeah. You can get out of it. That's because I hit you here. Okay. Put your key here. Well, watch this. Good, good sankyo, right? <laughs> because now I'm doing it at the level of where I hit you, and I'm attacking that point again. Yes. But if I attack here, no good. I have to be attacking where I hit you. If I hit up there, and try to do sankyo down here, Oops, I'm in big trouble, <laughs> right? Because no matter what I do, I cannot get Sankyo down here. Mm. Because I hit you up there, I have to attack there because that's where all of your key is. It makes it even worse if I hit you somewhere else. There. Oops. <laughs> now I've got no Sankyo at all and you've got me in a punch. Even if I do it here, you can still get out of it, probably. Yeah? <laughs> Pretty well. A little harder. <coughs> Watch this. I'll do the same thing. <laughs> the Sankyo works now down here because that's your center. Mm. Okay. So where you hit and where you do your technique to is very, very important. The other thing you can use with a Temi is to hit various nerve points. You know, you've got nerve point here, 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 okay? But to do that, you have to get past the muscle, okay? And you have to learn to make different types of fists. 
for instance, you can use Nippon Ken. You can use Ippon Ken that way, that way, that way, that way. Okay? You have to learn to use these different types of strikes for different nerve points. Okay? Yeah, so there. So you can use, for instance, if you hit here, you can use a different strike there to help you do technique. Right? You can hear there. Yeah. Different different nerve different nerve points allow you to do different things. So if a person if you're coming for sumiyotoshi, you can keep your balance. Okay? So if I'm coming for sumiyotoshi and I can't break you because your key is here, I can fix the key in a different place. Okay, and do do a strike to the nerve there, and that'll cause. It doesn't take much of a strike. Yeah. The only problem is if you do just a strike like this, it's not going to do much. So here, let's do it again. Okay, here. It doesn't do much, right? So that one, with the hitting the nerve that way, I can actually make you fall because I put all of your key there. Mm -hmm. But it has to be done with a spit. I can't do it with a flat of the hand, or I can't do it with a punch. I've got to use a very specific type of strike, mm -hmm. okay, for each point. So, different types of strikes, right? Here, all right? Here, okay? Here, all right? Here, here, okay, here. In different different parts of the body, you can hit with different strikes. Right? I can use this one for that point, but I, it's hard to use this. It's hard to use this. But for hitting this point right here, this is very good. Right? This is very good for this point here, but. This isn't. This one's too flat. Right? If I use this one, <laughs> it doesn't hurt that much. Yeah. But what it does is it actually causes certain muscles to react, nice and strong. Right? If I can hit you here, there. Okay. If I can take this hand and I can hit it right there. Right? If I can take this hand. Yeah, nice little nerve hit just to the outside uh, radial nerve of the leg. Right? If you're here, uh, other here, right here. If I want to hit the radial nerve, there. Okay. Various little techniques. I can make people move with just a touch. Here, right? It doesn't take much to move people. There. That's it. Okay. So if I'm trying to do a technique where I have to do it, to me, I don't have to hit hard. Yeah. Doesn't require a very strong hit, you, but you have to be able to use the different types of striking tools that you have. different strikes that we can use to actually do a technique. Yokome uchi. Each one of those we're using a different nerve strike. So what I just did was as he came in, here, here, here. So, various strikes for various parts of the body. Now, what would happen if I did the atemi here and then tried to do sankyo up here? He can, again, counter it. But watch what happens when I do it. Here, notice he's already on his toes. Let's try a little lower. 
what happens if I do it here? Even if I do it here, I can't, uh, maybe. However, down here, perfect. So I'm attacking the center at all times, so it tells me where I attack with my uh, sankyo has to be at the point where I fix the third point, whether it's up in the head, in the middle, or down in the leg. Okay. The atemi is not used for breaking the balance, but rather to fix the third point at where it should be. So, if I hit here, the third point's going to be here. If I hit up here, the third point's going to be way out here. Right? Okay, Bill, Larry, come over here. We're going to just show uh, an exercise for locating the third point. Okay, so uh, why don't we change sides so that the camera can see you guys better. So, uh, Bill, just to hold your balance well, and uh, the exercise is done by going to some place that's not the third point. Bill should try and hold his position. Go ahead. So, just nice there. And then locate a different place until you find the third point. Good. And do the other hand there. So just check different places until you can see where the person's third point is. That's all right. There. Okay, Bill, why don't you give it a try? Okay, so just locate, just move your hand around, take different locations and see what it looks like, see what it feels like. See where Larry's third point is. Okay. There you go. Got it, you found it. Let's start with kata de tori. We're going to do sumya toshi again because that's working a lot with the third point. Now, at this point, the third point is right here. Alright? Yep. Okay. So, if you have good balance, it's going to be hard to, for me to take you down. So I have to actually lift your, by doing a temi. There. Yeah. Lift your key. Let's just do this side. Okay. Here. There. Okay, now, if we do a temi, we have to be really careful. Here, uh, just hold on to this one. Okay. Now, if I do the atemi here, fine, it goes way out there, but what if I try to go out there when I do the atemi elsewhere? Let's see what happens. He just moves his center because the center is fixed at a different place. Bill, can you come in here, please? And you, let's just do, yep. Okay, so. Just uh, do a tummy at a different locations and just work with the different points. Now, if you go for a tummy here, then the third point's going to be much closer, right about here. Let's see if it works. Yeah. And let's try a tummy even lower. Right. Okay. And a tummy. Now, try to take them to the third, same point, but do a temi to the head and see what happens. So, where do you have to go? Um, for now. Yeah, try it. Yes, you know, we can call this jujinage because we form an X, like a ten. We could call it tenbin nage, we could call it ude kime nage because I've locked the elbow out. Uh, it really doesn't matter what you call it because I've known, for, for me, this is ude kime nage. Okay? That's one ude kime nage I know. But I also know this as ude kime nage. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Okay? This is ude kime nage. But, what you call it doesn't really matter because what we're looking at here is using it to learn where the third point actually is. 
because you have to, whatever it is, you have to throw to the third point. So we're going to do shomenuchi, and from shomenuchi we're going here into this throw. Now, remember from the last DVD, we talked about bringing the foot up to lift here, rather than lifting with the arms. Now, this hand has to go to the third point, which is right there. Here, bring it up, then. Now, this can be done without actually locking the arm. So it doesn't have to be an ude kime. From here, okay? Now, I haven't locked your arm, right? Still works. So, as you come in, I'm taking my hand, stepping back here, then, that's it. It's just a kokyonaga. Real simple. So, as I come back, I'm leading you with my thumbs, right? Then, I have to change my thumbs. See what that does to your body? Okay, so from here, I now have to change my thumbs. And that's what causes you, the, the, you to go up on your toes. So let's do it again real slow. So as you come back, follow the thumb. There. OK, let's do that again. Here. OK, so why don't you try that? Okay, so okay. Come, go back with your feet, front foot, so, follow your thumb. So I go back? Okay. Go back with your front foot. So that's it. Now, from here, just take it here and this there. This way. And then the thumbs are going like this. So now I've got you locked in. Okay? So at that point, once I lock you in, I can step forward to your third point. Okay? So let's do it normally. Here. Why don't you try? <laughs> okay. Okay. It's okay. So as I come in, lead with your thumb. Hi. There. Thank you very much. Thank you. Basically, to work with a third point, as the person attacks your omenichi, you're coming here. Now, I'm 90 degrees to him. So at this point, I can come in up and crush. Okay. The key is to get to this 90 degree position. I don't have to do anything if I can get to that position. If I don't, if I don't get to that position, if I'm just here and I try to come in, see, so you can block me, okay? Or if I turn you too much, now you can block me. So I have to be at this 90 degree position to actually there. If I can get the position, this is what it feels like if I do it for real. Go ahead. It's that fast. Because I'm already at 90, you're already fallen. In fact, I'll let you feel something. didn't even finish the throw, because right? you're already falling, because all I have to do is face, make sure that my hip is at 90 degrees to yours. You're too far off balance, and all I have to do is raise my arm. <laughs> all right? Yeah. 
So the position is more important than what I do with my arms. Mm. I don't, in fact, yeah, I'll show you another one. Come on. You gotta hit if you're gonna hit. If you're gonna hit, you gotta hit. <laughs> Didn't do anything with my arms. <laughs> I just cut you down so that you're at 90 degrees to me. Okay. So, what you do with your arms is even important. Hmm. It's what you do with your hips. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, just step in. Yes. Nothing to it. Let's do it again. Good. Thank you. So in this uh, little exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to use our atemi to fix the key. And we'll just come in for a we're step back and we're going to do a full katate tori uh, attack. So, from here. We fix the key in the head and then drop your sumi otoshi. Okay, so let's do it a little slower. So, as the person comes in, you're leading them around like this. Here, now. All we do is an attack and kick. Now, his third point is right there. So I have to drop him to his third point right there. If, the, if we move the person a lot with the atemi, if we, instead of coming up like this, I come like this, you'll see how, the, how his head turns and his whole body turns. Watch. And it'll probably be a little bit of a different ukemi. I guess I'm actually going to have to hit him. <laughs> so. so you noticed where I did a little bit of a tummy to his, his uh, shoulder, it turned his body this way so he would take a forward ukemi. I'll go very slowly. So now, because I hit him here, and uh, he's turned his whole body, I now have a forward ukemi. So depending on whether I want him to fall forwards or backwards, if I throw, cause him to f go back with his head, then I can throw to his third point back here, or just off to the side. But if I turn his body with the atemi like this, he's going to be taking a forward atemi, and you're going to have to go to the forward third point. So just a little bit of a demonstration again, real quick. So from here, here, now he's going to be going Backwards you can be, right? But if I turn him there, I have to take a forward ukemi. Let me show you one other one. Sumi otoshi. All I did was touch the back of your, there's a, your a radial nerve on the back of your leg. All I did was touch that. So the leg is going to lock out there so that you have to take a fall straight down. Some people actually do a strike to the back of the knee, but you don't need to. Yeah. All you have to do is touch the nerve. <laughs> yeah. and you can touch it almost anywhere. Just a little bit thunk, right? Can you show where that is on a static person? Sure. Let me just move him into position. Okay, so here, right? Now I have to hit the radial nerve right there. Oh, it's quite high. It's quite high. Because it looked like it was at the knee. No, there's another one at the knee. I'll show you another one at the knee. I can hit him here, right there. <laughs> different part of the knee. So each one of these different strike, different parts of the body, and causes different type of fall. Yeah. Right? I can make you go into a very tight little fall, uh, you're going to hate this one. <laughs> okay. From here, at this point, there. <laughs> it's straight down, right? Yeah. Causes you to pull that leg back, and so you'll fall straight down forward, land on your face. Mm -hmm. So different atemi 
fixing the key in different parts of the body. Thank you. Uh, we're going to use a Tammy now to fix the person's key. We're going to start with Tsuki Iriminage. So as the person is coming in, we're coming out and raising it up here so that the person's key is fixed in his head. And then stepping in with Sankaku Irimi. Okay, again. Okay, now. Let's just take a look a little bit at the hand motion here. We're going to go real slow. It's coming up here, okay? And it's taking the head back to the third corner to drop it. You have to be careful so you don't break his neck. In the old days, they would do something a little bit more rambunctious. We're not going to do it here. It's just they come in here and then be snap. Well, we don't do that anymore because we're nice people. Let me just do a little, one more on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. So, Larry, can I get you in here? We'll do one with you, and then you can try some with uh, Bill there. Right. Yeah. Now, we're going to show you something, what happens if I do something else. notice because I hit him down at the lower level I couldn't fix the key up here and I can't take him down however watch I'll do the same thing here notice if I keep my hand down there I can actually do the Iriminage again because we fix the key at a point in the body that's the point we have to throw Again, let me just show you with that one. Uh, other side, so the camera can see. Here. If I hit him in the stomach and then tried, let's see what happens if I try to do something else. It doesn't go because all of his key is down here. I have to fix the key in his head if I'm going to use his head to throw or I have to hit him in the shoulders if I'm going to use his shoulders to throw. Right, again, Larry. So that fixes his key at that certain point so he cannot move the key up or down. A couple points about doing Sankyo Nage. Let's just face the camera here as if I've had Sankyo. Doing Sankyo Nage, okay, uh, you have to make sure that this hand is in tight. There can be no slack here. If I have slack right in here and you are able to move your elbow, I can't throw you. I have to have this tight into this hand. There. Now I have control over your body. Okay. Number two, it's not a pull down. It may look like a pull down, but watch the direction it goes. See, it's like that from here. Okay. Okay. One more time. from Katagatori, there's no need at this point to come in and lift him up because that gets him done. And that's why he's going backwards. And then to try to make a big movement there, we can make it nice and simple. And then it becomes much smoother. We can improve the smoothness of that by just coming in. We're going to work on Ushiro Ryotek Vitori Kaiten Nage. And I want to do this one because a lot of people end up throwing to the wrong 
point. They, they see the third point as where the feet were, but it's not. We'll take a look at it. As you come in, okay, and I come down, cut it off, and your hand goes down there, right? Now, normally people tend to throw there, where if you stand up, your third point is going to be somewhere over there. But it's not, because this foot is now off the ground, and it's your fingers and your foot that makes up the third point. So now it's over there. So we're creating a new third point rather than using the old third point. So let's just do that one again. We're going to move a little bit over here so you've got more room to fall. So here, down. There's different ways of taking Ushiro Ryo Tekubitori. Okay. Uh, don't worry about this. We're going to be more coming. We're not going to be taking the whole thing. Some people will say, step in. Okay. Others people will say, step back. Okay. But you don't need to do either. If you use this motion that we've been working with uh, in the past, in the other DVD, okay, we did this. Okay. So from here, you're using this. And so watch here. Let me. Uh, this is from the uh, third DVD, so you may not have seen it. As you come in, okay, here, then rotate back. Yeah, let's do that again. From here, as the person comes in, then rotate back. Yeah. So that makes it... Uh, the movement a little bit quicker. Okay. With this exercise, it starts in ski, so you lead it away here, then the person's third point. Just thrusting to the third point. So you have to make sure that when you do this jotori, that you don't start like this, where you can just poke people. Nothing to do. You have to start off at a good distance. Okay. What I don't want to see anybody doing is any of these push pull type of things. No need to do any of this. It's just thrust to the third point. So, this. Once you have control of the jaw, problem you're having. Larry, can I borrow you again? I'm going to have to move you forward a little bit, back a bit. Okay. So, what you had trouble with was at this point, here, trying to get it through. You got it caught on his abdomen. So, you actually kind of turn with it a little bit more, but you keep it in front of you. What you did was you kept the jaw in front of him. See where the hand is? I'm pressing into here. You have to bring your jaw here. I brought it into here. My ha, not his ha. Okay? Try it again. There you go. Yeah, perfect. Good. Larry, you want to try one? Come forward. Come forward. Okay. Now, with this one, because it isn't the can, you don't have to lift him up so high. Right? Watch, if you would. There is no 
at this point, after you come in here, there's no need to do this. Right. This way, he's already falling backwards. Okay? You just, all you have to do is thrust to his third point. Yeah? So try it again. That's it. Good, much better. So from here, he's going to start with a chudanski. Okay, so I'm coming here. But you notice what I did. I've blocked it here. I've grabbed here. There, to his third point. I've dropped him to his third point. But I'm not going to throw him there because he's recovered. So it's going to come through here. Now, I've got a new third point over there. Okay, so do it normal speed. Okay. Yeah. So it's a little bit more from over here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. One more, and we'll start more from over here again. Okay. Yeah. Notice I'm hitting two third points. Okay. So the first third point that I'm hitting, as it comes in. Here, okay, so, and he's recovered because his foot has moved there. So now I'm turning him around, creating a new third point, and just throwing him down towards it. So this is an application of the use of the third point principle. Don't lift so much. If you lift me, I'm recovering. You want me falling to the third point. You'll, I'll let you feel it when dootski, oh, you'll end up over there. So if you dootski, okay, if I lift you like this, you recovered. Where's your third point? <laughs> yeah, it's way out there. It's hard to throw you. So I don't do that. I don't lift. Okay. Here. There. You might want to come up to here to drop the person, mm. but if you come up all the way here, then the person just recovers. Okay, so let's see what happens when I do this. Hey, that's better. See, it was a much smoother throw. Not less force required. Yes. Good. This uh, exercise, we're going to do kata to tori, uh, kokyu nage, moving to uke's omote position. We're going to use a little bit of a uh, trick here because we don't have the ability to move into this and then this point and then forward. We're going to move uke instead. We're going to bend his so that I'm now at his third point. So we're going to use a little bit of a Extension. Don't pull. It doesn't work by pulling. It works by extending into his hara. Okay. So as the okay comes in, here. That's it. Uh, I don't like to see this type of thing. It's just an extension straight down to their third point. There's no need to cut back if it's done correctly. The reason people end up cutting back is because they come here and they try to do this and the person doesn't go, so they try to cut the leg. No need for that. If you can get to Uke's 90 degree position by moving Uke, then there's no problem dropping him to his third point by just doing that. It's because people try to just come in here that they now have to cut the leg out. Yeah. Because they're trying to overextend uke. This technique doesn't work by overextending uke. It takes, works because you drop them to their third point after you've gotten to the 90 degree and behind position. Here. Okay. So, Bill, if you'd come, Larry, you can watch this a bit. Okay. So. 
rather than, I normally talk about coming out here to get to the 90 degree and behind position and then stepping in. Well, we're not going to do that. We're going to use this little here to move Uke. I'm attacking his center with my wrist, going past it. Now I can drop him. Okay. What I was saying before was if I don't get behind him and I come like this now, he's behind me. Okay. So when I try to cut him, he doesn't go down. He has me in Kaiten Nage. Yeah, exactly. See, so if I come here and do this, he actually has me in Kaiten Nage. So I have to get around to using his 90 degree position. Okay? Then I can use his third point. I have to fix his third point. I have to fix, if, if I, here's the problem, watch. If I come in here, you see he's still mobile. He's got a lot of slack and he can change where his third point is. So I'm never going to throw him to his third point. Well, once I fix him here, I've now fixed his center. His third point stays in one place. Okay? Okay? So just doing this isn't going to do it. I have to attack your center. Okay? So, there. So we're going to do another one. This is another kokyu nage, uh, but we're going to throw by going to Uke's ura side. Now, you'll see a lot of, a lot of people doing it like this, okay, and then coming in here. Now, you'll notice that Larry's weight is all on his back foot, and I don't want that. What I want is Larry's here weight to be more towards his front foot. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Okay. We're going to fix his center here. If I try to throw just over there, he won't go because he's covered. You'll, you'll see what happens. Here. He just stepped to cover his third point. So there's nothing I can do about that other than to follow where his third point goes. Here, there. Now I'm 90 degrees in behind, so I can come up here. Now I've got a new third point again over there. So I'm going to take you down to that third point. One of the things you have to watch out for is that some people will step forward, so you have to. The third point is going to move on this one, okay? okay? So here, okay, now. Notice, because you moved around, mm. as your foot moved around to recover, I had to change along with the third point. Let's do that one again. So I'm going to allow you to, here, okay? So I have to do more of a kesa cut here to your third point, which was there, because you stepped around again. So depending on how the person steps, you're the one that has to change the technique. So why don't you try it? <laughs> okay, so from here, you're cutting down to my third point. No, nope, not my third point. <laughs> okay, uh, so I step. There, that's it. Now, can you see my, can you just about see my back? Yeah. Okay, now you can do, uh, Kaiten, Soto Kaiten, right? Step back, Tenkan. There, okay. So I'm like this now, where are you gonna throw? Ooh. Right in front of the camera. You got it? Okay, so. There, okay. Uh, 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 that's not my third point. My third point's over there. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> yeah. So you have to start throwing. You have to st don't, don't worry. You have to start throwing there. Okay. You have to start throwing over there, but you can move me around. Ah, interesting. 
You can change my, you can change my third point as well as I can change it. Okay. Here, feel this. So, I'm coming here. I just changed the third point for you by leading you around. Yes. Yeah. So that's all you have to do. <laughs> that's interesting. Okay, so let's, let me do it again. So I'm coming in here. So you, so it's, Aikido works because you and I work together. It is not just you and it is not just me. Mm. It's how the two of us work together. So as you move around and I move around, the third point is always changing. So here, that's Morote Tori. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step in and I'm going to use this side here. Okay, now I've created a third point back there. So that's where I'm going to take them down to. Let's do that again. Yeah, so from here, he's coming in there. So I'm going to move here. So now I've created a third point by drawing this foot back. I can then throw straight down to that third point by extending to it. I'm not cutting down, I'm not cutting down, I'm just taking it down and extending. Okay? Again. Okay, so at this point you're going to come in here as if you're attacking. And then third point. Okay. So from here, you just come in one. So now you change his third point. So you can drop him right to his third point. You use his own body and his own motion at this point by coming in here to pull his leg forward to make, create a new third point. You can do this from the other side too. So if you grab this side, okay, same thing. Here, okay, now. But now it's throwing to here because his third point is over there. Now if Uke steps back, that changes things. Right, from here, at this point, <laughs> okay. You have to go to his new third point, but we can fix that. We can fix it, well, it doesn't matter, here. We can fix it by using this, there. Okay, now try to step back. Real difficult, right? Because what you're doing is you're pulling his back leg forward to create this new third point. Whether it's that side or whether it's the other side, doesn't really matter. Here. You're using the jaw to fix his third point. <laughs>